Hey everyone, welcome back to Computer Science 340. In this video, we're going to continue talking about binary search trees. In the last video, we talked about what a binary search tree is and how to do the search and insert algorithms on it. In this video, we're going to talk about how to remove nodes from the binary search tree. And I split this off into its own video because it's just a little bit complicated. So let's go ahead and talk about how this is going to work. Okay, so here I've drawn a binary search tree. And the first thing we will need to do to remove a node is to find which one we want to remove. That, of course, would be done using the same binary search algorithm that we already talked about. And so we are going to identify the node that we want to remove. Like we might want to remove this 11 node here, or this 40 node here, or this 85 node here. And then we come to the tricky part of the algorithm, which is when we have to actually remove it from the structure. So we're going to break this into cases based on how many children that the node has. So in the zero case, this is easy. So to remove this 11 node here, all we have to do is to set the 27 nodes left child to null. So we'll just go ahead and do that and that'll leave the tree like this. So that one, like I said, is relatively easy. We just set the parents link, which is linking to the node we want to remove just to null and then the garbage collector will come along and get rid of it. So the number of children is the determining factor here and zero is pretty easy. Now let's talk about what do we do if there's one child. That's the case for this 40 node here. Well, we can't just set this link here to null like we did last time, because then we would disconnect not only the 40 node, but also the 48 node. We want to keep the 48 in the tray. Instead, what we can do is we can set this 27 link instead of to 40 to the 48, bypassing the 40 node and linking to this one instead which will look like this. So we set the parents link, instead of linking to the node we're deleting, we set it equal to the only child. A sort of morbid analogy that we could use is that if somebody dies, their parents take care of their children. So this is like the grandparent is adopting the children of their child who is now no longer. Yeah, kind of morbid, but that's essentially what's happening here with this one. Then we have our last case, which is when we have two children. And this one is the hardest because now we can no longer use either of the two solutions we did previously. We can't just set this to null like we did first solution zero because then we lose the 76 and the 90. Likewise, we can't have 72 adopt the 76 and the 90 node because then 72 would be left with three children because it already has one and we can't do that and moreover, we can't do that because then the 76 and the 90 are both bigger than 72. So even if 72 only had one child, we couldn't just do that either. So what we do is we're going to actually shift around the tree a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to find a new root for this subtree here. And we'll do that by swapping nodes. Let me instead talk about deleting the root of the tree, which will make it a little bit easier to see what's happening here. Okay, there I filled out the tree a little bit and also now identified the root node as the one to be removed. This will make it just a little bit more interesting. So what we need to do is we need to replace this one as the root. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find a new value that could be the root of the tree and swap it with the 56. So we need to identify another value that's somewhere in this tree that could be used as the root value. And most of them can't, right? We can't use 27 as the root value because if I put 27 in here, then there's other stuff in the left subtree like the 40, the 36, and the 51 that are bigger than 27. So we'd be violating one of our rules. Likewise, I couldn't use like the 81 down here. I couldn't make that the root of the tree because then there'd still be stuff on the right subtree that's less than 81. And that is again against the rules of the binary search tree. There are in fact only two values in the rest of the tree that I could put up here as the new root. One of them I'm going to say is 51 and the other one I'll say is 68. Those are the only two that we could put up here in the root and have it still work. The reason being because 51 is the biggest one in the left half. If I put the 51 up here in place of the 56, then everything on the left half is now less than 51, which makes it okay. Likewise, if I put the 68 here, then everything to the left is of course less than 68 and everything else to the right is more than 68. So again, you gotta find the smallest thing 
on the right subtree, like 68, or the biggest thing in the left subtree, like 51, then you could use either one of those. I think what we'll do is we'll use the smallest thing in the right subtree. And then what you do is you swap the value with the one in the root, or the one that you're removing. So like that, we swap the 68 and the 56 around. And the reason that helps is because now we have a sort of easier problem. We no longer need to delete the 68 node here that had two children. Instead, we need to delete the 56 node here, which only has one child. And so what we're going to do is we're then going to recursively remove the other node. So now we're going to recursively delete the 56 here. And so that's going to call back into the same method, and it's going to hit either the zero case or the one case here. It's actually true that the node we swapped with can't have two children. If the 68 node here had had two children, one of them would have had to be less than 68, the one on the left, and so that's the one we would have picked instead as the smallest value in the right subtree. So we'll recursively delete this one, which will hit either case zero or case one here. So that's essentially the algorithm for doing the removal here. We have these three cases, one of which does the sort of like swap and recursive call kind of thing. Okay, so here we have added some skeleton methods into our binary search tree class. We have the public remove method, which takes a value to be removed and returns void. It just goes ahead and does the remove if the value is found. This method calls the remove at method starting at the root node, and we're going to do the same trick that we did for insert where we return the node value back from these recursive calls. The reason for that is because each of these could need to remove a node from the tree, and so by returning the value of a node, we're able to make changes to the tree, and so it's possible that we'll have a new root node, or it's possible we'll remove the very last node, in which case root will be null. So we assign the return value of remove at back into root. Then we have the private remove at method, which takes not only the value we're removing, but also the node that we're currently on, because in doing this, we're going to have to do two things. We're going to have to search for the value we're supposed to be removing, and then once we find it, we actually do the remove. So the first part of this is basically the same thing as the recursive binary search algorithm that we already implemented. We actually do this for both searching, when we're looking for data, we look through the tree to find where it is. We do it for inserting as well, because we need to search for where the item should go, and we're also going to do it for removing. So the first step of this is to check if the node is equal to null. In that case, we're just going to return null, because the thing wasn't there, and so we didn't find it, and we should bail from the search. Otherwise, we're going to need to do comparisons on the data. So I'll again say if node.data.compare to the value we're looking for, if this is less than zero, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to have to go to the left direction. So I'll say that the left subtree, just like we did for insert, is the result of calling remove at the same value, but to the left, like that. All right, then we're going to carry on and we'll say else if the node.data.compare to this value is greater than zero, we're going to do the other way, obviously, and I'm going to say node.write equals remove at the same value and node.write. So basically, we're searching for the thing to remove, and now I have one other case, which is that the value is equal, because if it's not null, and it's not less than zero, and it's not greater than zero, then node.compare to must have been zero, which means it's equal. And now we're going to do the algorithm that we talked about on the whiteboard, where we actually go ahead and do the removing. And so we have our three cases. Let's handle the two easy ones first. The first easy case is that if it has no children, so if node.left equals null, and also node.right equals null. Well, in that case, I'm just going to return null. And that will cause the node to be disconnected from the tree, because remember, when we're doing these recursive calls, we're saying node.left equals whatever remove at returns. So if remove at here return null, then we're setting that into the left subtree or the right subtree. So by returning null here, we're removing that node. Our other sort of more easier case 
was if it has exactly one child. So we'll have to do these in two separate ones. So if node.left equals null, node.right here can't be null because if it was, I would have hit this case here. So if only node.left is equal to null, then I'm going to return node.right like that. The reasoning there is the same thing, because if we have only a right child and we're removing this node, we return node.right back up so it can be hooked up to the rest of the tree in place of ourselves. Then we have the other one, which is else if only node.right is equal to null. In that case, what we'll do is we will return node.left. Then we have the last case. The else cases, we have both node.left and node.right are valid. Let me put in some comments here. OK, so now we have this more complicated case where we have the two children. And so there's a few things we need to do. We need to find the smallest node in the right subtree. That's the first thing. Then we need to put to the node's data there. Then we need to delete that node instead. And so we're going to do this by calling another method because this would be a little bit too much to do right in here. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to say node, and I guess I'll call it swap, is equal to the minimum node in the node.write subtree. So we're going to write this method in a second, talk about how it's going to work. But I'm going to call a method to find the smallest node starting at a given node, which in this case will be the right subtree, and store that in this node reference called swap. Then I'm going to take that node's data, and I'm going to copy it up into the node that we're supposed to be deleting. So I'm going to say node.data is equal to swap.data. So the swap node should stay in the tree. That's not the one we're trying to delete. We're not trying to delete that data anyway. So I'm going to copy that up into the node that we do want to delete, the one that has two children. That will save it. I could put nodes data into swap data, but we're going to remove that anyway, so it doesn't really like super matter. And now what am I going to do is I'm going to recursively remove that node. And that one's in the right subtree. It could be the very next node in the right subtree. And so in order to make sure that everything gets chained back up, I have to do the same thing that I did for these recursive calls and say I'm going to remove from the right subtree and then copy back into the right subtree. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this remove at method we're working on. And now the one I'm going to remove is swap.data because I copied one copy of it up into node.data and we've already kind of guaranteed ourselves that it's going to work there as the new node here. But now I have the second copy of it in swap.data in the node I found down there. And so I need to remove that copy and it's in the right subtree somewhere. So that's where I'm going to start the search. And so this recursive call then is going to go ahead and remove that one. And then for these cases down here, I need to return the node that we're working with again so that everything gets chained up kind of correctly. Most of the time, this will be returning the same node I got, but when we do make changes, that will ensure that they are actually reflected in the tree. So hopefully that makes some sense. That's just coding up the algorithm that we talked about on the whiteboard, except for one piece, which is this method that I'm calling here to find the smallest node in a tree. So we're going to have to write that here. That's a handy thing to do when coding. If you realize like, oh, I have to do this thing and it's kind of complicated. Let me just call a method for it and continue on with this algorithm. And then we need to go ahead and solve that problem later. So let's do that. I'm going to say that I need a private method. Again, this is just called internally, so there's really no need for it to be public. And it returns a node, and I've called it min, and it starts at a given node in the tray. Well, let's look at the whiteboard to think about how we're going to solve this problem. All right, so let's say we're writing this algorithm. And let's say at first we start with the root node here. And we want to find the smallest node value in this tree. Well, of course, if we have a left child, like in this case, the left child is guaranteed to have a value less than us. So I'll say something like if node.left doesn't equal null, then we're going to search on the left side. And so I'm going to return the result of calling ourselves the min algorithm on node.left. 
that will move us down here. Again, if we follow this algorithm, I have a left child, so I'm going to search down here, and then I'm going to search down here. And now we don't have a left child. So I'm gonna say else, if there is no left child, then we just return this node itself. So basically we just go left and go left and go left and go left until we can't go left anymore because our left child is null, and then we return this value itself. The right child makes no difference here at all. For example, if I was to call this on the 72 node, I would go left to the 68, and even though I have a right child, it doesn't matter because the right child is bigger than me. And so here I would find that the left child is null, and so we would return 68, which is correct. That's the smallest value in this subtree over here. Just to make it absolutely correct, we might add something in here that says like, if the node is null, then we would go ahead and return null because if the whole tree you're trying to find something in is non-existent, then there is no smallest node. But other than that, that's all there is to this algorithm. So I think it should be pretty easy to code up. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle this now. Like I said, I'm gonna put this sort of safety base case in where I say, if the node is equal to null, then we return null, just in case we somehow called on a node that isn't even here. Otherwise, what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, if node.left equals null, meaning I don't have a left child, then we're gonna return this node itself. I guess this can be an else here. And then I'll say else, we do have a left child, so we're just going to recurse down that side. And I'm gonna say we're returning the min on the node.left side. I hope you're getting used to recursion because we're seeing it an awful lot now. So we're recursively just going down and following this left link over and over and over again until we find that there is no left link and then we just return the node that we're on. So with these things in place, we should be able to test this. Okay, put a little comment in there. Let's go ahead and look at testing this remove method now. All right, I went ahead and modified our test program now so that we read in numbers and instead of searching for them, we call remove on them. And so as long as we put in positive numbers, it'll try to remove it from the tree. If we put in something that doesn't exist, it should just return nothing and nothing should really happen. But if we remove a number that does exist, it should take it out of the tree for the next time we print it. All right, so let's go ahead and test this and run it. And I'll try to remove maybe the 44 at first. And it looks like it doesn't work. 65 doesn't remove. 12 doesn't remove. The 32, it looks like it changed to a 36. So something is going wrong with this. Let me think about what it might be. Okay, so after doing a little bit of debugging, I have realized that I got these backwards because <laughs> it can be a little bit confusing with the node compare to stuff. So because I called node dot data dot compare to this value, if that returns less than zero, if that returns a negative number, that means that value is in fact bigger than node dot data. So in that case, I don't wanna go left, I wanna go right. So basically I just gotta swap these things around and I think it should work after this, let's test that. All right, let's try it now and I'll try to remove the 12 and that does work, okay. So I think we're good now, it looks like everything is working. We can go through and try to remove all of our nodes one by one. And that's why testing is so important. You should always test code right after you write it because then it's fresh in your mind and you'll be more able to get it. And so we can remove all of the nodes and, and nothing goes awry. So I think the remove method is working. So here on the notes page for today, we have details on this algorithm and also a link to the code with everything we've done so far. Here's our sort of completed binary search tree class that we worked on together. So if you have questions on any of this, please just let me know. Thanks.